Hello and welcome to a fresh new episode of Science Monitor, our weekly update on all that is happening in the field of science and technology in and around the country. I'm Ashwarya Kapoor with you. Let us take a look at the headlines first. Seeking new horizons, NASA's new horizon proves Pluto to be bigger than predicted. Matter has a new existence. Scientists at CERN discover penta quarks. Antibodies from camels way forward in noble therapeutics. In our In Focus segment today, we will understand about reversing brain drain and the policies and steps taken by DST to bring talented scientists back to India. And now the news in detail. Distant and cold. Pluto, the last planet in our solar system, has always loomed as a faraway mystery. But the code is soon to be deciphered as NASA's New Horizons has reached Pluto after nine years and three billion miles of travel. And what is more, the very first set of photographs taken by New Horizon has revealed that Pluto is bigger than previously predicted. Pluto, the farthest and one of the smallest planets in the solar system. Considered a fossil remain from the beginning of solar system, much about Pluto remains a mystery. But not anymore. As for the first time in the history of mankind, a space probe has managed to reach Pluto. Travelling 3 billion miles for almost a decade, NASA's space probe, New Horizons, has finally reached its destination. Experts at John Hopkins University Applied Physics Laboratory received a signal as New Horizons managed to fly by Pluto on 14 July, passing within 7,750 miles of the planet at 7.49 a.m. Eastern Time. While approaching Pluto, the cameras of New Horizons have managed to capture much sharper images of the dwarf planet and its moons than those that are available till date. Data collected has already helped the scientists to precisely determine the size of Pluto and it is now established that the dwarf planet is bigger than thought. With a diameter of about 2370 kilometers, some 80 kilometers wider than previous predictions. We've discovered that Pluto is a little bit larger than we anticipated. We now have good measurements of its diameter and its radius. Its radius is 1100 in 85 kilometers, plus or minus 10. That settles the debate about the largest object in the Kuiper belt. It also has important scientific implications. Because it's larger, and we've known its mass very precisely for a long time, that means it's a little less dense, which will raise the fraction of ice in the interior that modelers um, will need to compensate the rock in the interior. The images also reveal mysterious dark spots in the planet's southern hemisphere, along with ice caps and plains on its surface. New Horizons is programmed for a 30-minute flyby of Pluto and its five moons, during which the cameras and instruments on board will capture very high-resolution images of the planet and make hundreds of observations. These images and observations will help scientists trace the formation of solar system and Earth. New Horizon is a lightweight nuclear-powered probe that was launched on 19th January 2006 as a part of NASA's New Frontiers program. In 2007, it flew by Jupiter, using the giant's planet immense gravity to slingshot itself outward. Since its launch, the probe has travelled more than 3 billion miles to reach Pluto. Nobel laureate Murray Gell-Mann revolutionised our understanding of matter with his discovery that neutrons and protons, till then considered basic particles that make up an atom, are further composed of quarks. Now, adding more to this understanding, researchers have stumbled upon a new particle, pentaquark. More in this report.
What happens when huge stars collapse? In the depths of space, at unimaginable temperatures, what new particles are generated as black holes are formed? Probing the mysteries behind the dark universe, researchers have arrived at one answer, pentaquarks. After the much-debated God particle, the Large Hadron Collider that restarted on 5th April this year has made another breakthrough with pentaquarks. Researchers working on the collider's LHCb detector have arrived at a new state of matter as they have observed that five subatomic particles called quarks combine together to form a new kind of particle called pentaquark. The existence of pentaquarks was first proposed in the 1960s by Nobel laureate Murray Gelman, who also proposed that protons and neutrons were made up of three new types of particles called quarks. Scientists have found experimental evidence to the theory, now by studying the disintegration of an unstable ball of three quarks called a lambda baryon using the LHC. The pentaquarks were observed to be made up of two up quarks, one down quark, one charm quark and one anti-charm quark. The discovery has been reported in the journal Physical Review Letters. The finding brings with it answers to a lot of unanswered questions regarding the universe. As scientists attempt to probe into the dark universe, they believe lies beyond the visible one. Science Monitor team along with the audience wish them all success. With large and powerful bodies adapted to survive in extreme environments, camels are a unique species. More so as they are known to possess unique antibodies besides the normal mammalian antibodies. Now antibodies from camels offer scope of developing novel therapeutics and diagnostics and this is exactly what Dr. N.R.A. Banerjee's laboratory at University of Calcutta aims at. Take a look. Functional and highly specific, yet smaller and lighter than normal antibodies, as they lack the typical light protein chains. Researchers working on recombinant technology would agree that antibodies from camels or camelids offer huge potential for biotechnological applications. Known as a single domain antibody or a nanobody, antibodies from camels are today widely used for therapeutic and cosmetic purposes. Venturing into this cutting-edge area and developing novel therapeutics and diagnostics from camelid antibody is the laboratory of Dr. N. R. Ray Banerjee's in Department of Zoology at the University of Calcutta. The laboratory is interested in engineering of novel antibodies that can be used in translational medicine. With more than 20 years in academia and industry in India and in USA, Dr. Enna supervises the group that works on developing camelid antibodies for immunodiagnostics and immunotherapy. The team has been able to successfully isolate the genes, called VHH genes, responsible for the production of nanobodies and express them in E. coli bacteria for the production of antigen-specific antibodies. We are developing antibodies for infectious diseases, for example, common diseases which suddenly mutate and become atypical and cannot be diagnosed by traditional antibodies. We are also developing them for cosmetic uses, for example, as deodorants or as dandruff for dandruff, uh, for acne, which are chronic ailments. These antibodies are very powerful, as well as for therapeutic and prophylactic molecules because of the high rate of elimination, these uh, antibodies um, uh, versus the traditional antibodies which tend to accumulate in your body and give rise to uh, problems in the synovial joint such as um, edema and uh, a pseudoarthritic like situation. These antibodies are very very efficient, they can be used topically, they can be taken orally and they can be used as diagnostic tools. These antibodies are small in size, so it can easily penetrate at the specific site and are also stable at high temperature. According to GROUP, while the technology offers planned applications in the treatment of bovine mastitis, acne vulgaris and candida infection, 
They have potential for the cure of tropical and systematic ailments of human and animals as well as allergies. And now it is time to take a short break. We'll be right back with more science news. Keep watching Science Monitor. Welcome back. After the break, you're watching Science Monitor. Let us now have a look at some important science and technology activities happening in India and abroad in our next segment, Science Express. In an ambitious project towards developing early warning system and reducing human casualties, scientists, geophysicists and seismologists of 27 countries will now work under India's leadership. The announcement was made at a summit on combating earthquake disasters. The work will consist developing parameters to observe, study and analyze the chemical changes and physical displacements of the surface that occur before earthquakes. It was also announced that towards this end, India will be launching a satellite by 2019, which will send images of surface displacement up to the accuracy of a few centimeters. Tackling the issue of scarcity of conventional boat building timbers and providing cheaper alternatives, the Central Institute of Fisheries Technology has developed boats made of coconut tree wood for the fishermen of Kerala. The boats constructed by chemically treating fallen coconut trees are durable and cheap. We thought of coconut wood because some diseased coconut trees and felled coconut trees were lying waste and so we thought of building a boat out of uh, coconut wood and started experiments on that. The boat covered with fiberglass prevents the leaching of chemicals and hence the boats have been declared to be environment friendly. Researchers have handed over one of the boats to Kannamali Chiriyakadavu Fisheries Development Welfare Cooperative Society for trial. With the aim of promoting good sanitation practices, and raising awareness among the people on the construction and use of toilets. Renowned Indian artist Sudarshan Patnayak created a sand sculpture in eastern state of Odisha on July 12. You know that in our country, there are many people who are using open definition for open definition, which is a very big issue. That's why we want to create a sand art, which is our message that we want to use the toilet, keep 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 the toilet, एनवायरमेंट क्लीन तो ये बहुत जरूरी है हम चाहते हैं हर कोई तो इसमें अवार्ड होना चाहिए जो स्विच तक का बात होता है। The sand sculpture with the message "Use toilet, keep the environment clean" was made at a beach in Puri city. The sculpture was aimed at making people realize the importance of need for sanitation and use of toilets in public places. While the International Supercomputing Conference in Frankfurt, Germany released the top 500 list, China's Tianhe 2 has retained its crown as the world's most powerful supercomputer. Tianhe 2, designed by researchers of the Chinese National University of Defense Technology, is located at the National Supercomputer Center in Guangzhou City. The supercomputer is one of the three supercomputers funded by the Chinese government in an attempt to build an exaflop supercomputer or a machine capable of processing a million trillion calculations per second. Tianhe 2's current top performance is 33,860 trillion calculations per second. Adding to the long list of extinct species, Canadian researchers have discovered a new dinosaur which has been named Wendy Ceratops after the Canadian fossil hunter Wendy Sloboda who first spotted the fossils of the dinosaur. The dinosaur, according to the experts, was a unique species which measured a 20 foot long and weighed nearly 2 tons. Belonging to the horned dinosaur family, the distinguishing feature of Wendy Ceratops were the prominent upright horn atop its nose and a series of short forward curling hooks adorning a bony shield-like frill at the back of its head. The details of the discovery have been published in the scientific journal PLOS-1. 
The enormous health benefits of vitamin C have always been known. Now experts say that vitamin C may also be a key to long life. The finding comes from a study based on 1 lakh Danish people's intake of fruit and vegetables as well as their DNA. According to experts, people who had the highest intake of fruit and vegetables have a 15% lower risk of developing cardiovascular diseases and a 20% lower risk of early death. This is because vitamin C helps build connective tissue and is also a potent antioxidant that protects cells and biological molecules from the damage which causes many diseases, including cardiovascular diseases and early death. India, the largest pool of educated and skilled youngsters. Now, perceived as one of the biggest reservoirs of intellect and innovation, India has much to offer to the world. But the question is how to retain the scientific talents in the country. Some of the game-changing policies and schemes of the Department of Science and Technology are giving answers to these questions. So what are these policies and how are they aiding in reversing the brain drain? Well, this will be the topic of our discussion in our next segment, In Focus. Blessed with unbound imagination and extraordinary creativity, youngsters are builders of a nation. According to UN reports, with 356 million 10 to 24 year olds, India has the world's largest youth population. With such a large talented pool of youngsters, India's intellectual and innovative is unmatched. Why then is our country still a step behind in being a developed nation? The answer lies in two small words with huge economic impact, brain drain. Starting from the 90s till recently, India witnessed the mass migration of its talented and educated youth abroad, seeking better opportunities of employment and higher education. But fortunately, in the recent years, India has also emerged as one of the first countries where the phenomenon of reverse brain drain occurred. While the governmental policies have played a crucial role in reversing brain drain, one department worth mentioning in this context is the Department of Science and Technology. DST's game-changing policies and schemes have been pivotal in bringing back the best minds to serve the nation. What are the factors that prompt Indian researchers to take up research abroad and perform well? Of utmost importance is the realization that attracting the best scientific talents demands a conducive environment along with social infrastructure that enables cutting-edge interdisciplinary research. In this context, with the aim of encouraging scientists to return back and pursue research in India, DST has instituted various re-entry fellowships which are gaining fast popularity among NRI researchers. The Ramanujan Fellowship and the Ramalingoswami Re-entry Fellowship has encouraged brilliant scientists and engineers from all over the world to take up scientific research positions at any of the premier scientific institutions like Council of Scientific and Industrial Research, Jawaharlal Nehru Centre for Advanced Scientific Research, Bose Institute, etc. and universities in India. So there are several fellowships that allow our scientists to come back to India until they find a permanent job, either in academia or in industry. So people who have good potential, who have done good work, who work in good areas, uh, we want to attract them back to India. Now many times when a person is ready to come back, he may not have a permanent job, in which case you know, it becomes very hard for people to come back. So we provide these opportunities for them uh, to come back whenever they are ready. So these are Ramanujan Fellowship, for example, or INSA Inspire Fellowship uh, for faculty. Besides this, DST's scheme of collaborative projects with scientists and technologists of Indian origin abroad, which enables scientists and technologists of Indian origin living abroad to visit India for a brief period and carry out research activities jointly with Indian scientists. 
Department of Biotechnology's Welcome Trust Fellowship Program, the Energy Biosciences Overseas Fellowship, and the Council of Scientific and Industrial Research, Senior Research Associate Scheme, are but some of the schemes that facilitate the return of skilled scientific expertise back to the country. While numerous programs and initiatives have been implemented in the country to promote scientific and technological education, DST's INSPIRE scheme has emerged as a major program in this context. And also other benefits like for money for doing research. So they can go to a university, they can go to an institute and they can work there for up to five years uh, until they are ready to move or, or they find a permanent position there. So in this way, you know, you can attract a lot of good uh, scientists from abroad. And that's what we have been doing consistently. INSPIRE, which stands for Innovation in Science Pursuit for Inspired Research, is a national scheme that aims to motivate young students to study and pursue a career in science. INSPIRE organizes various programs that are aimed at inspiring excitement of creative pursuit of science along with awards and scholarships for excellence in science. Scientific expertise, needless to say, are the wealth of a nation and can go a long way in bringing out much-needed social changes in a country. It is indeed the need of the art to provide opportunities to talented researchers to pursue a career in science and develop scientific profiles within the country. Such addition to high-quality scientific manpower in scientific and educational institutions, needless to say, will expand the scientific acumen of the country. On to our next segment, Science You Can Use. While the world celebrates International Year of Light, a large population of the planet still dwells in the dark. But now the wait is over with the miraculous solar-powered Suli lamps. This renewable, long-lasting and versatile lamps that can be attached to ordinary pet bottles comes as a boon to millions. Take a look. Solar lamps. Sounds ordinary, don't they? But what about versatile lamps that can be attached to pet bottles and multi-functions as reading light camping, gardening and bicycle lights. The SULI lamps, created by a group of Chilean entrepreneurs, charges using direct sunlight and can be used for a total of 50 hours at night, covering a diameter of 5 meters. The solar lamp with a small and simple design comes with a solar panel and LED. But the special feature of the lamp is its two fastening systems which help it to be fastened on any surface to create different applications. Este módulo solar está compuesto básicamente por cuatro elementos que son los más importantes. Uno es un panel solar que toma la energía del sol, la lleva a unas baterías, en este caso que son baterías AAA recargables, eh, cuenta también con un circuito y con un LED. Este LED eh, es el que genera la luz, que para nosotros es como la principal particularidad de, del módulo solar. Y eh, junto a estas cosas existen eh, lo que nosotros llamamos enganches, que son dos enganches estándar que hacen que Zuli eh, sea versátil. Estos enganches están diseñados en el fondo, eh, se diseñaron pensando en que no fuera solo una linterna, sino que uno pudiera jugar o crear eh, a través de la Zuli, crear diferentes aplicaciones. Hope to be launched in April 2016, Sully Lamps marks the adieu to long dark hours without harming environment. Well, that is all for this episode of Science Monitor. Do tell us how do you like our program. You can send your feedback and suggestions. Our email ID is news at vigyanprasar.gov.in. You can also write in to us at vigyanprasar C24, Kutub Institutional Area, New Delhi 110016. Well, that is all for today. We'll be back with fresh new stories on science and technology again next week. Till then, stay tuned to Rajasabha TV and think scientific. Bye-bye.